On the breakfast, stakeholders say reopening of land borders poses a great threat to food security in Nigeria, among others. Also on the breakfast, petroleum products such as wheat used vehicles top the list of items imported into Nigeria from January to September 2022. This is according to a business report. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. As always, to start off the, our conversation with uh, the top trending. Okay, so top trending would mean that we're looking at issues that have a lot of reaction, that has a lot of engagement, whether they are online or offline. Now, one of it that's most talked about is that the Lagos state government had sealed an amusement park over electrocution of a guest. Uh, that's what it is. The order, the full closure and suspension of activities at the kiddie session of Wonderland, Lagos, an event center after the guest was electrocuted or a guest was electrocuted at the place. However, according to, uh, you know, the government said it was imperative. The intervention became very important and imperative to prevent further exposure of attendees, particularly children uh, at the venue to prevent uh, accidents that can lead to injuries and fatalities. A statement by the commission disclosed that the event venue owner, uh, who goes by the name Ezekiel Adamo, had refused to implement safety measures prescribed by the uh, commission, despite several meetings at onset of the project, following an initial safety inspection exercise carried out on the venue to deliberate on safety infractions of reserve within the facility. So, however, uh, th this is where the conversation has started. I, I, I think I remember at, at the same time that happened, I got the information immediately, you know, uh, that uh, those who were at the event center or Wonderland, they had closed a certain part of it. It wasn't like the event center entirely was closed, but you know, a certain section of it was closed due to that unfortunate incident. Uh, the kids could not. It was a kiddies corner or section, if you like to say. So it brings us to the issue of safety of facilities. I know that the government has said that facility owners in Lagos should comply, should be in compliance with the state or stated safety guidelines on events and has urged residents to socialize responsibly. I mean, these are the statements, but let's, let's be very honest. It, it brings us to the conversation of, you know, collapse building and structures. We know what has happened in 2022 across you know different parts of the con of the country especially in lagos so we talk about having an infrastructure uh do this infrastructure meet the required standard i mean that's why you have government government does not exist because they have to exist they exist for a certain purpose that they will be in business of governance and that would mean ensuring that lives and properties are protected <laughs> however you achieve that uh, might necessarily not be, you know, uh, a concern of a lot of person, but it's important that you ensure all of that. So yes, it's really unfortunate that this, you know, the commission is also saying that there was, uh, a, a, you know, some sort of conversation with the structure owner or whoever is supervising or supervised the building of this infrastructure. And then uh, they, they did not comply to uh, the rules, the guidelines, it was okay for us to just walk away and leave it. We can't continue like this and expect a different result. We're talking about human lives. Uh, this is not Mario game. If you know the Mario game, you know that if you play, uh, you have like four lives. So if you lose at the first instance, you have a second life. And then you can become very careful when you have two lives left. So you play carefully when you have two lives left. Uh, then you play very carefully when you know that you have lost three of your lives and then you have one left. We just have one and that's it. If you're dead, you're gone. That's the end of the story. 
uh, to be very honest, everything would move on. So we need to be very conscious. Those who have businesses, I mean, uh, if you talk about events and activities, this should not happen. We should be able to consider, think ahead, uh, be proactive enough to look out for you know, where all of this incident will happen. Not, we don't look forward to having a system that's perfect, but we're saying, hey, if government exists as a body uh, to ensure that lives and properties are protected, that's why you have all of these agencies. That's why they're looking at, you know, your facility. They're looking at the properties that you have, whatever it is that you want to um, erect, be it, uh, you know, business structure or whatever it is, a building that's supposed to be a procedure uh, an approval to all of that, okay? So it, it's a two-way thing, and we constantly say that security is not just the government's concern, but it's a collective responsibility. And usually when we talk about the issue of security, I'm sure that we're always very um, quick and fast to think about the issue of, oh, there's a bandit attack somewhere, Boko Haram has actually you know, launched another attack in another place, or someone has been kidnapped. But it goes beyond all of that. Security as security as a whole is important. I mean, just imagine, people actually went out to have a great time, you know, to marry and uh, be in the, in the period of festivity, and then someone has been electrocuted, quite unfortunate. So if you own, um, a facility or a property, whatever it is, it's important that you follow the guidelines, the rules. And we know that the government has a role to ensure that there are laws in place to guide lives and properties. But however, let's also look at the level of compliance and implementation. Do we always need the government, you know, to be on top of our issues or we have a government saying, oh, there's force everywhere. They have to force you. You have to be, you know, uh, arrested. You have to be manhandled. There has to be a lot of force to ensure that we obey laws. Can we not naturally think that whatever it is that you do, you need to consider another human being? Well, human being before we become anything, that's the most important thing. That's what we should factor. So as you, uh, you plan to have facilities, you have businesses, whatever it is, you should also consider the lives of individual. Ensure that everything is done in accordance with the law. And yes, the government is there to ensure that, you know, um, these laws are adhered to. But however, I'm sure that you have a conscience as well. We don't need every other time the government to poke us. A uh, very unfortunate incident. I think that this festive period has been characterized by several, uh, some people would say evil. It's really unfortunate. Some persons have lost their lives in the course of this, and we constantly, uh, you know, uh, send our prayers, uh, send our condolences to the families of those who have lost their lives and who have become victim of this unfortunate incident across uh, the country. Now, and another one, which should be uh, something of excitement. I mean, it should be an excitement to everyone, but unfortunately, that's not the case, is that, you know, the Calabar Bikers Carnival turns bloody. Uh, it, the reports are saying that a lot of people were feared dead. That's the report. Now, the carnival has started. Carnival's a very big event, you know, not just for Calabar, across the state, but Africa's biggest street party. And that's been going on for a very long time because this initiative was introduced by the former governor of Cross River State. So the Bikers Carnival, uh, as it's been called, happened yesterday, uh, was held on Tuesday. So today's Wednesday in Calabar. Now the Bikers Carnival, like I mentioned prior to this time, is one of the innovations brought into the uh, carnival by the current governor, Ayade, to add color and, uh, you know, panache to the national or annual festival introduced by the former governor, Donald Duke, in 2004. Well, uh, a lot didn't really turn out now <laughs> quickly because I remember that once upon a time I was in the city Calabar and during the carnival, of course, we have a role to play, bringing reports, whatever it is, uh, updating the people about what's going on. Donald Duke himself, I remember being a victim of uh, Donald Duke's bat man's bike you know, running over my leg at the time. It, was, uh, it wasn't such a huge incident, but it was really uh, saddening, really, okay? But um, uh, according to the reports, there's been a lot of reaction. If you go on Twitter, you would see that, as of yesterday, up until this moment, Calabar has been topping the charts with several comments about how the carnival had turned sour. 
First, of course, it started with the uh, cultural carnival, but of course it progressed to having the uh, bikers carnival, and the carnival will continue up until the end of it. Well, a, an eyewitness, uh, after the unfortunate incident that happened, said that uh, the bikers parade was flagged off at about 5 p.m., that was yesterday, and one of the cars, it was a Camry, which was also on the parade, because usually during the bikers carnival, you have a, a, a lot of display of several uh, motor bikes, power bikes, you know, you see vehicles, vintage vehicles being displayed. There's usually uh, a route that they follow and what have you. Now, it was reported that this car, which was part of the parade, a Camry to be precise, lost control. It was speeding off from a certain area of the city, which is called 1111 Roundabout, that's almost close, you know, to the government house along the Calabar Road, heading to Marisley Saw. Now, uh, at one of the adjudication points, it lost control and rammed into the crowd, which is close to the central mosque at Bogobri. Bogobri is a community where you have the Muslims uh, in Calabar. So I'm sure, I don't know, in different parts of the country, you probably might have all of that. So but in Calabar, there's a community where you have predominantly the Muslims or uh, a certain parts of the people. It's in Bogobri. Another part would be the Nasarawa. It killed about five persons on the spot. Now, this is according to the eyewitness account. Now, the eyewitness for this uh, stated that after about 20 minutes of the incident, another five persons gave up the ghost. Now, uh, while they were on their way to the hospital to seek medical attention, uh, you have another, you know, five or so there about a lot of them actually died at various points. And it's really saddening. I'm trying not to, you know, tear up uh, what should be a, a point of celebration and turn to sadness. But, um, it's also reported that those affected are some of members of the Hausa community and passerby and shop owners around the area who came for business or, you know, was just around the Bogobri access. And, you know, the feelers I got was that uh, members of this community decided, you know, to take to the street. It felt like there was a lot of outrage, anger and what have you. It was an accident. We're hoping that the government of the state would, you know, be in control, uh, the police, PRO and what have you, to ensure that this calm uh, it returns because an accident is an accident. But of course, uh, whoever was in charge of that vehicle should be brought to questioning. There should be a lot of work going on. But people are not allowed to take the laws into your hands because that's why you have the government. So yes, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, there was cures. People started running Helter Skelter for safety following the reaction by the Hausa community uh, who were mostly affected. <laughs> I, I, I also remember having this, you know, this gist or... Uh, talk with uh, a close relative and who said, you know how it is. A lot of persons will just perceive at this point in time that this might just be an attack. You know, this, this is an attack necessitated or just put out on a certain people because of what they think and what they feel. Uh, it's really unfortunate. And I, I've seen several comments. The, the commission, usually when you have a carnival or an event being planned, I mean, even if you're going to build a house that's supposed to be a plan, you should consider a lot. Uh, should probably would have been expected that is a parade. Should you begin to run on a certain limits? Because even on, uh, if you look at the, the rule guiding, uh, driving, especially within the residential area, as, uh, only until you're on the express, there's a limit to which you should be on at the end of the day. But um, uh, there's a lot of blame to be taken. It's usually a beautiful sight. It's something very beautiful to behold if you're usually around, uh, if you've ever been around the carnival. But unfortunately, it turns out uh, that's because of the unfortunate incident. But we pray that the government would, you know, wake up to her responsibility and arrest the situation and peace and um, normalcy would return. But really, it saddens my heart. The pictures are really, really very... Uh, uh, very, 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 very saddening. And that's why we can't put them out right there for you. It feels like it's uh, gloom for the top trending this morning because another sad one, it's a sad one, which I say, uh, had, had referenced it as it yesterday, was that a uh, fire actually got a residential building in Lagos. And that was uh, uh, that unfortunate fire incident that happened around the K2 area 
Keto area of Lagos. I mean, so if you live in Lagos State, or you, you probably would know the Keto area, Alakbar axis. Uh, it happened on Monday, and uh, I wish we can actually show. There, there's a set, there's a certain you know picture that I saw. It, it was in flames. You know when you talk about flames, everywhere was was in flames. I could literally you know see the video of these flames, uh, the raging fire that was. Uh, that raised the building as resident trooped in. But from the video that I saw at the scene, a lot of people were watching from afar. It was more like a, a spectacle. People were gathered and they stood around. I really don't know uh, how far it was with reception. I mean, the police, if you like to say. That's what's going on. That's what it looks like. This is after there was an intervention, quite unfortunate. So yes, uh, this morning for the top trending, it's been a lot of unfortunate uh, reports and happenings across different parts of the country. And I also can say that when we started off over time, when we make reference to fire incident, if you note, it's usually, not necessarily, but usually festive period where you have all of this incident, fire outbreak and what have you. And we say that the fire service across the different parts of the country does not just exist for the, for the sole purpose of putting out, you know, fire, okay? Or fighting the fire, if you say firefighters, that's not why you exist. Beyond fighting the fire, it's also important that we ensure that we prevent the incident from occurring. And that would mean there should be uh, a level of sensitization. How far do we sensitize the people, especially when we get to a period of festivity, when we get to December where there's going to be a lot of merriment and what have you. There should be constant education, getting to the marketplace, educating the people, creating awareness so people know what to do and what not to do, turning off the electrical uh, appliances and what have you. We know that you can't really be in control 100%, especially when you would have to think about the issue of arson. But we're saying what we can control, why don't we act very proactive before we begin to have. It, it, it's, it's very achievable that we reduce, that the, the, the rate at which we have fire incidents is, is reduced in our country. If we engage in information sensitization, that's why we have the Ministry of Information and Orientation even at the federal and the state level, in different states, I'm sure that the such ministry. So what are we doing with all of that? Educating the people that people need to know. Let's avoid all of this. That's what it means to be proactive, rather than reacting to the incident. But however, at the time of this report, it was not recorded whether uh, lives were lost. We pray that no one lost their life in all of this, but we know that properties would have been raised down and people would say, as long as you have life, there's hope. It goes beyond all of that. Uh, very unfortunate. As we also engage, the carnival is also another unfortunate incident. Before the carnival, there's a commission that's saddled with the responsibility of organizing the carnival. We need to be proactive. We need to control uh, the crowd. We need to ensure that there's crowd control. Because I know that a lot of people will be excited. They want to look at the show of, of all of these vehicles, the power bikes and what have you. But hey, it's also the business of government to ensure that lives and properties are protected, not necessarily the issue of robbery and kidnapping. It goes beyond all of that. That's why you have the different agencies and what have you. We, as you uh, continue to celebrate the spirit of festivity, we would actually urge that you be careful, you be vigilant and be proactive, whether as an individual or as a government. That's the much we can take on the top trending. We we'll take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.